Welcome to another Midweek Mentor. I'm so glad you're tuning in. Hope you're blessed and encouraged by watching. In this episode, we're going to be talking about an attitude of gratitude. Hi, everyone. My name is Tom Simmons. I'm a member of Lifeline Church and a student of the Word. Our mission here is to be a lifeline by leading people into becoming lifelong followers of Jesus. I believe it's not by accident, but by God himself has drawn you here so you can receive a message of hope, encouragement, and love that God's been preparing for you. Be sure to like, comment, and share this post. It'll go a long way in getting the word out. So let's get started. I've recently been confronted with the fact of being ungrateful due to circumstances that we're in. And the Holy Spirit used this co a conflict, a really hard conflict, to bring this to my attention. I want to share this in hope that it speaks to others. And then I realize when my thoughts and actions aren't lining up with the Word. So the Bible has a lot to say about thankfulness. In fact, giving thanks to God is such a fundamental importance that the Bible mentions failure to do so as a basis of God's judgments against mankind. That's Romans 1, 20, uh, verses 21, Romans 1, verse 21. And then in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, it says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, giving thanks in all situations, for this is the will of Christ Jesus for you. Clearly, thankfulness has to be a characteristic of Christians. And the re you know, I want to talk about the reasons why. You know, our earthly blessings are grounds for gratitude to go to both God and others. And we should thank God for earthly things that he provides for us. He's responsible for the fact that we're alive. We are blesses us with more beyond. We can also thank other people for their acts of kindness and gifts and love towards us. And it's good to acknowledge the, the efforts of others and to demonstrate our gratitude. But there's more there. Far beyond any earthly blessing, we are to be thankful to God for his spiritual blessings. And foremost, we are to be grateful for his gift of salvation. Because apart from Christ Jesus, we deserve an eternity in hell. Romans 6, 28, John 3, 16 through 18. They all talk about that we were still enemies. While we were still God's enemies, dead in our own sin, he sent his son, Christ Jesus, to make atonement for us. And it is good and rightful that we continually thank God for this. And that's where we get to this thing about salvation. Salvation involves more than rescue from hell. God has given us his eternal spiritual blessings by uniting us with Christ Jesus through faith. That's Ephesians 1, 3. If we are in Christ, we've received forgiveness of sin, adoption into God's family, and eternal life. We are heirs with God, co-heirs with Christ, Romans 8, 6, 17. And it says that God has equipped us for all we need for a life and godliness, 2 Peter 1, 3, and 4. He says he's given us his Holy Spirit to dwell in us, John 14. And the list of spiritual blessings goes on and on and on. And all of these are cause for gratitude. All we have freely been given by God through our union with Christ should be enough for us to cry out, Thanks be to God for his, in, for his inexpressible gifts. However, it's not only what we perceive to be a positive that should cause us to thank God. And that's the situation I found myself in. Thankfulness is crucial to the Christian life. It's one of those things we are commanded to do always in every situation. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 We should thank God in trials, temptations, tribulations as well. James chapter 1 talks about that. And this is probably one of the most important lessons for a Christian to learn if he or she is truly going to be joyous and have an attitude of gratitude. And that's where I was falling short. Why would anyone be thankful for such terrible things such as trials? You know, we find ourselves now in these times of so much uncertainty, thrown into situations that we may not have wanted to be in, finding ourselves in places in life where we didn't think we would be. So 
Why would we be thankful in all of this? And the answer is because even the bad things work together for the ultimate good of those who love God, Romans 8, 28. Now think about that. Even the bad things work for the ultimate good of those who love God. It doesn't tell me that every only good things are going to happen. It doesn't tell me that when bad things are happening, I've done something wrong. It tells me that it, all of that, it works towards my greater good, which is what God is calling me to. How? Because the ultimate goal of a Christian, my ultimate goal, your ultimate goal, is to be conformed into the image of Christ to be molded into the same image of Christ Jesus. And God uses these trials to make us stronger. God uses tribulations and tests and things to purify our faith. You know, I, I thought I was a grateful person. I thought I was a generous person. And through situations in the last few months, I found out there was still a selfish side of me that didn't want to be where I am and in the situations that I was in. And I had become ungrateful. And it started to taint and it started to poison everything that I was looking at. I began to question, not God, never been there, but I began to question what I had done wrong, where I had missed it to put me in the situations that I am. See, God is always faithful in the midst of all these trials and tribulations and all the uncertainty and the chaos that we find ourselves in, God is always faithful, working towards that greater good to make us into that image he desires us to be. Now, the suffering in this world caused, caused by sin, it grieves God's heart. Yet he equips us to endure it, he redeems us to her for our ultimate good. And through those circumstances, he brings us closer and closer to what he wants to be. You know, even in death, a Christian can give thanks. We can give thanks for death brings, the, brings us to that point of the ultimate presence of being in the presence of Jesus, Philippians 1, 21. And a proper understanding of God's sovereignty and his, and his providence in that he is working all things out together for the good of those who love him. That's kind of a, a foundation of thanksgiving. And it has to be our perspective to keep us from becoming in, ungrateful and complaining like I became. You know, we have so many reasons to thank God. And yet it's so far too rare a practice for so many Complaining and grumbling, it all comes so easy to us. Rather than look for what's lacking in our lives, we need to learn, I had to learn, we need to thank God in everything. You know, realizing God doesn't owe me anything. He doesn't owe us anything. He has given us everything through salvation. He has given us everything through Christ Jesus. Jesus pointed out both the importance and the rarity of thanksgiving. Remember the story of the ten lepers. He heals the ten, but only one returns to thank him. Why did that one return? They all had things to do and people to go tell and say, look, I'm clean and I can come back to my family and I'll come to this. But one disregarded his circumstances and went back to Jesus. Why? Because he had that sense, that attitude of gratitude. See, in a spiritual sense, we're all born lepers with disfiguring and an ailing disease, this thing called sin. Yet Christ voluntarily took our sin, our punishment for our ingratitude, and the bruises of our iniquities, the stripes of our sin. Thankfulness is the only proper response for such lavish grace. You know, the word says we are become living sacrifices, greater than a dead sacrifice. And in that, our thankfulness has to become greater than our circumstances because we have been given such great grace. 
Our lives and everything in them are gifts from God. James 1, 17. We have done nothing, can do nothing that deserves these gifts, that deserve this grace. I am forever indebted into him and his grace. And this is the key of why an attitude of gratitude is so important. We can't simply thank God for the good things because in doing so, we cheapen the sacrifice. He's called us to be living sacrifice. It's easy to thank him. It's easy to look at the good things and say, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for this. Thank you for my family. Thank you for this. That's easy. That's a dead sacrifice. But we are to be living sacrifices. So we have to sacrifice our feelings, our emotions at times. When the hard things come, we need to realize that. And we need to thank him. Because in thanking him through, notice I said through the hard things. Because we know the word says that all things work towards the good, that in good result of those who love God. And I knew in my heart I love God, but something wasn't right. I was looking at everything in bitterness and I was looking at circumstances. And you see, circumstances are simply circumstances. They are not permanent and they are not indicative of who I am or who you are because we are being made into the image of Christ. And because of that, whatever those circumstances that God uses to push us and mold us into that, we have to be thankful for because the end result is the only thing that matters. The trials, the tribulations, the situations we find ourselves in, they may not be good. And there are great examples throughout biblical history and, and Christianity of people who lived horrible personal lives, but they kept that attitude of gratitude, of thanking God, because they knew, regardless if God never did anything else for me the rest of my life, accepting me into his family is reason enough for gratitude. You see, we need to be people of the word because only as we are people of the word can we allow that to come into us and take over those feelings and emotions. Let the word strengthen us and I had to do that. I had to see where I was failing in that and let the word strengthen me that regardless of what my situations might look like, good or bad, didn't matter. I need to be thankful and grateful for where God has me and what's going on because everything is moving towards his greater good. And in a larger sense, this is the thing that makes us, should make us stand out from those who don't know Christ Jesus. Even in midst of chaos, turmoil, and confusion, we can be smiling because we know that in his greater plan is moving forward, always moving forward for that revealing moment when we will stand before Christ Jesus that revealing moment when we, he will set foot upon this earth again and make everything right. You see, we're only in circumstances, not reality. The reality is he is molding me. He is molding you to be in the image of Christ. And that is our reason for gratitude. God bless you. Let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, we ask right now that you remove any roots of bitterness from all of us, Lord, that we would see the world around us through your eyes and that we would have an attitude of gratitude, thankful for everything in every situation, Lord, that we find ourselves in. For we know even when it appears dark, 
you are the light and you are moving us forward to be that image that you have designed us to be, the image of your son, Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.